um, record this. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by cosecant x plus 1. Cosecant x plus 1. I'm going to multiply top by here by sine x plus 1. Sine x plus 1. Okay. So then my common denominator is just going to be simply sine x plus 1. Cosecant x plus 1. And then on top we're going to get cosecant x plus 1 plus sine x plus 1. Okay, and I, I see it now, by the way. I now, at, based upon what I did with you this morning, I now get it. Okay, so I have no idea. Let's just go ahead and, um, and simplify the top. I don't know. Okay, so the bottom... <laughs> Bottom and I, ugh, I ugh. let's go ahead and multiply the bottom out, okay? And let's keep in mind that cosecant is one over sine. So what I want you to do is when you see it, I want you to go, ah, okay? I want you to give me some audible response for when you see it. Okay, so let's go ahead and multiply out the, the bottom. Sine x times cosecant, what do we get? Ah, okay. Sine x times 1 over sine gives me 1. Sine x times 1. 1 plus cosecant. Ah, and then plus 1. Ah, so now the top and bottom are both ugly. But they're both the same kind, exact kind of ugly, okay? So I was thinking that we had to beautify it, but we really don't have to. And anything over itself is one. Yeah, because what I did was after you left, I went ahead and just tried to do it a different way, and then I ended up with the same thing on the top as we ended up with on the bottom, and I was like, Okay, something's funky here. But that one, that one's just very unconventional. Very unconventional. So, any of the other problems you want to take a look at? Yeah. 24. 24. Mm, okay. <clears throat> Okay, Whew. first thing I'm going to do to get rid of a potential, oh no, I don't know if we really have to do that. I, I just like to do this just in case, and it, it, if I have a uh, common mistake that might pop up. Okay, so, hmm, well, I don't know, start walking, okay? Um, let's find a common denominator. So I'm going to have to multiply top and bottom by 1 minus tangent x. So then I've got cosine x times 1 minus tangent x minus cosine x all over 1 minus tangent x. Can you do cosine squared x then? Multiplying cosine and tangent? Um, but I'm not going to multiply this times that. It's minus. So then I've got sine x cosine x over sine x minus cosine x. <clears throat> well, hmm. This is kind of like a whole lot of ugly again. Um, Let's just simplify the top. What the heck? I'm just, I'm grasping at straws now. So let's go ahead and distribute. And 
I don't even know how we can simplify the right side at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it for now. Hopefully you can see why I thought um, multiplying that out might be helpful, because what do you notice happens on the top of the left side? Yeah, these cancel each other. So we've got a little bit of a simplification. Okay? So now what I'm left with, and actually, let's see, I can even simplify this. I got negative cosine x times sine x over cosine x all over 1 minus tangent x equals the same thing. Yeah. My cosines will cancel. I'm just trying to strip it down to get it as simple as I can. Then maybe I can see a link of some sort. Negative sine x over 1 minus tangent x. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm very confident that the right side, we just need to leave it for now. I don't really know. If, you know, we could multiply top and bottom by the conjugate, but I don't know if that's going to be any, anything worth a, for us to do. But this tangent we might be able to simplify. Let's go. This might be one of the longer ones we that we do. This is kind of this is kind of cool. You guys are like, no, your definition of cool, my definition of cool, a little bit different thing. Hmm. Any thoughts now? Do you think you could multiply 1 minus tangent by the conjugate? Is that something that we should even do? We can't. So you're thinking come back here and go 1 minus tangent times the conjugate. I don't think that's a bad idea, but let me show you why it's not going to lead us anywhere. If I multiply those two together, you get 1 minus tangent squared x which 1 minus tangent squared x doesn't equal anything. 1 plus tangent squared x gives me something. So... Can you turn the 1 into like cosine over cosine so it's equal to 1? Exactly. So this will be cosine over cosine. And so now what I've got, it's going to pop out here really quick. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're out of here. So whenever you have a one, you can just replace it with a cosine and cosine? Yeah, well, what I did was I just found a common denominator. Oh, yeah. Multiply top and bottom by cosine. Okay, hopefully you see a destination here. Multiply Exactly. Exactly. And so now what I've got is I got negative sine x cosine x over cosine. This one's kind of brutal. I'm kind of doing half shorthand, half not. No, those two things are in, in fact the same. If let's just go to the side. Four minus one over one minus four. What do I get? Negative one. Ten minus seven over seven minus ten. negative 1. So what we're seeing here is that when you flip-flop the order of a subtraction, the only thing that changes is the, is the, is the negative. So here's what I'm going to do. This one would be a good bonus, I think. Not a 
part of the meat of a quiz. Let's go ahead and take a negative out. Oh. So if I take a negative out, can I rewrite it as sine minus cosine? And ask yourself, do we get the same thing if I multiply by negative back through? Negative times a sine gives me negative sine. Negative times a negative gives me positive cosine. So I suck that negative out. Now what? We're right there, the destination staring you right in the face. I got a negative on the top, negative on the bottom. It's all multiplication, so what can I do with the negatives? Cancel each other out. That was tough. Let's count how many steps that was. We got to count how many steps that was. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come on with me. <coughs> In no way, shape, or form can you whistle. Not with your fingers or anything. Okay. Okay. My wife can't whistle either, but she still tries. It's so cute. So, I can whistle blowing out and breathing in. Mm -hmm. My brother can do that as well. Oh, really? So is that all the questions we have? Okay. okay. So last night, my wife and I were talking. I'm sure that you guys have heard about Isaac Wilson uh, being killed in a car accident yesterday morning. Um, that is now 10 students that I've taught that have now passed away from car accidents. <coughs> so... I don't want you guys to be the topic of conversation 10 years from now here, okay? Isaac was wearing a seatbelt, he was doing a nice job, but he, he went into the oncoming traffic, veered over in oncoming traffic. At least that's what the article in the paper says. And I don't know what the conditions of that were, but pay attention when you're driving, put your phones down and, and take it as a serious thing. Another student um, 